What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be working with the HP Z600 workstation once again. Now this, this workstation has been featured a couple other times on the channel. Um, used to be my primary video editing workstation and today it's going to be taking the place of my new video editing workstation which is this guy down here which is a lot bigger. Uh, big dual Xeon system. Um, but we're going to be loading up Linux on this guy, and I'm specifically going to go with the Ubuntu Budgie distribution. It is so far my favorite distro of Linux. Um, real clean sort of environment. Really, really like working with it. So we're going to go ahead and download this and get her flashed over to this flash drive, boot it off there, and see how it works with it. Um, we'll take a look at the hardware we've got in this guy real quick before we get going, and then we'll see how it goes. So the HP workstations, these Z-series workstations, are a lovely thing to work on. They have just a simple little latch mechanism, almost like a car door handle on the side. Just lift and pull, and it pops straight off. So installed, we've got our... Um, RX 570, so fairly basic GPU, uh, dual X5675 Xeons, along with 24 gigs of DDR3 RAM under this cover up here. I'm not going to take it off because it's annoying to get back on. Um, we have two two terabyte, um, I think they're Western Digital Green drives. One of them is slightly unhappy, so we may or may not be using these. And then kind of just chucked down in a bay, we have a 240 gig SSD. Um, I have somewhere a uh, mount for that, a three and a half inch adapter that I'm going to be sticking in there, but I can't find it at the moment. So that's going to do for now. So that's basically what we're working with here. Fairly basic graphics, but it should work quite well with Linux. So I decided to go with version 2104. Uh, Ubuntu Budgie. It's the most up-to-date and has the most up-to-date graphics drivers installed, so that will work the best for me. Um, the support cycle on them are quite short unless you go with the LTS version, but I believe the LTS version does not come with the uh, AMD graphics drivers and whatnot, um, and updating is fairly simple, so not a huge deal. I just decided to go with that so I have the latest and greatest of everything. Now, I don't think I've showed it off in a uh, video before because um, I haven't been making videos in quite some time. I do apologize for that, but uh, this is my laptop docking setup here. Got a uh, basic mechanical keyboard, a uh, little, it's really just a monitor stand that's designed to have up to six displays attached to it, but it came broken. Some of the arms were broken off of it. In fact, it's the exact same stand that these are all on. Um, but one of the, a couple of the pivot points are busted. So I just used the center two, attached a board to the bottom one, and put my laptop dock on there so I can just dock the laptop straight under the monitor. Really like this setup. Um, this is my older 4K um, Lenovo ThinkVision panel. It's got a little bit of, you can probably tell there's a bit of blotchiness going on over here. So it's been relegated to a secondary display just for laptop usage. Um, and it's actually running at 1440p because this laptop can't do 4K60 out on it. Um, the internal uh, video is just not good enough. It's got a, I think it's a Quadro, embedded NVIDIA Quadro of some kind, but it's real low power thing. And it just really can't do 4K60 as far as I can tell. Um, it's not a super powerful laptop, but I really do like it. It's, gets, it's just stellar battery life, like 12 plus hours. So it's a real good kind of road warrior type laptop. Just take it around with you wherever. Um, wow, this is gonna take absolutely forever. It says it's gonna take another 45 minutes. I may go download this on a different PC that's hardwired in because this guy is running over Wi-Fi, and for some reason it is really slow. And my Wi-Fi, I need to uh, I need to reconfigure my Ubiquiti access point because um, for some reason, I only get about 20 megabytes a second download or well, transfer speed through it, and it should be a lot better than that. I mean, 
yeah, I don't know. I think I need to install the Ubiquiti controller on a VM somewhere and have a poke around with it, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Most of my stuff is hardwired, um, but I doubt if that's the problem here because it would still be downloading pretty quickly. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll jump to whenever I get that done and burnt to the USB stick there. I'm just gonna use Rufus to write that to it. Um, there's plenty of guides on how to do it, so I won't bore you guys with that information. Um, so it's just a bit of fun anyway. Okay, so we got that all downloaded and uh, plugged into the computer here. So let's go ahead and power it on and get it into our boot menu. I love that the, uh, the lights dim slightly when I turn this thing on. That's how you know it's a good computer. I believe F9 is the key to get into the boot menu. Yep. It's probably going to give me a warning about that one hard drive. I'm going to try to use it anyway because uh, I really don't care. It's a smart event. So, yeah, something's probably not happy about it. I'm not too worried by it. If the drive dies, it dies. I'm not going to put anything that I care about on here anyway. So, let's see, USB device, Ubuntu Budgie. And launch. Let's see how it handles six displays. I've only ever run it with two before, so this is going to be interesting. And that sounded like it just rebooted. That's slightly concerning. Is it, is it doing the thing? Is it doing the do? No? Well, hmm, we have two displays that are active, the rest are not, oh, oh, okay, well that's interesting, I wonder why only two of them are working, probably because the video driver isn't loaded yet, but we shall see, I'll carry on with the install and Hopefully everything goes okay. Okay, well it booted. We're only getting two of the displays active at the moment. We're gonna go ahead and install it anyway and hopefully that remedies itself after the OS loads up the rest of the way and we're able to actually configure the displays and whatnot. So let's go with English keyboard, normal installation, and install third-party software for everything. That's fine. That way it gets the best drivers. I'm sure somebody will uh, argue with me about that in the comments, but I don't care about all the drivers being open source. I know that is kind of the ethos around Linux, but... <clears throat> all right. We are going to erase the disks. Uh, that's fine. Continue, select drive. We're gonna put it on the 240 gig. And install now. So apparently that drive had Windows 10 on it before. I pulled it out of an old server, so that doesn't surprise me. It's fine. Uh, that's not good. Error, F syncing, closing, dev, SDC2, input, output, error. Retry, retry, retry. Nope, okay, well, uh, SDC2, that's probably that other f hard drive. Oh, good. Uh, and I think it's crashed. All right, we're gonna remove the other two drives. Bear with me for a moment. Okay, I've pulled the two problematic two terabyte drives out of it and we're gonna try it again just on the 240 gig SSD. 
I will probably try to find some different drives to add back to it for bulk storage because I really do want some reasonably decent amount of storage in this thing. Um, 240 gigs really isn't enough because I'd like to be able to do a little bit of video editing on it. In fact, I'm going to try to edit this video on this machine once I'm done. So let's fire it back up. Mash that F9. Apologize for the blue switches. Yes, they are irritating. But I do like this ducky keyboard. Put some nice uh, custom keycap set on it, and I really like it. They're uh, not a true SA profile, but they're close. Uh, let's see, USB device, Ubuntu budgie. And we're just going to wipe that drive once again. see if I can get the other displays to show up. So we'll go ahead and log in. That nice, fresh desktop environment with the stupid clock that I always disable. Because like you have a clock here, what do you need a clock down here for? I don't know, stylistic choices. Anyway, yeah, I do a lot of uh, tweaks visually to this, but uh, we will do that after we make sure the rest of the displays are going to actually work. So let's try plugging the MST hubs back in. I'm gonna try just the one bottom one and see if that works. All right. And we have one display. All right, let's look for displays. Sees them. Solution 1600 by 900. Yeah, these are crap displays. 
place. frustration um, I've determined that these MST hubs just are not going to work in Linux or at least with this particular distribution they have always 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 given me trouble even in Windows it's like sometimes it takes me 45 minutes to get the system to detect all the screens correctly so I think it's, uh, it's sad to say but I think the monitor wall is going to be modified a bit. I don't really use all six displays anyway. This thing's, it's ridiculous. It really is. Um, so I think I'm going to take and remove the top three. And I'm actually going to move the 4K panel from my laptop dock into the center and turn two of the other HPs on their side to be vertical displays. Because I do like vertical displays for uh, web pages. So yeah, let's tr let's give that a shot and see how it works. I mean, <laughs> can't be much worse than this, hey? Okay, so new configuration. Let's see if it behaves well with this. We've cut out the MST hubs entirely. We've got one 27 inch panel, two 21s on the side, uh, 27 inch panel in the middle. And uh, yeah, let's just do it to it and see what happens. Got one panel that's immediately wreck okay too. Hopefully I plugged the right cable in for that third panel. Doesn't look like I did. Oh, oh no, I did. Okay. Hey, all right. Well, they're sideways, but they're all recognized properly. So, awesome. I think this might be how I roll with it. I'm gonna be doing primarily everything on that middle panel, but side ones are really just for if I need to bring up a web page or something. So. That's fine. I don't really need all six of these panels. It was more of just a, I set it up like that because I could sort of thing. <laughs> this honestly makes more sense. And I've been meaning to strip this down for a while now, especially trying to get rid of those stupid MST hubs. I hate those things. They're just awful to work with, so. So I've still got a fair bit of work left to do on this setup, but I think I've got it to a reasonable point, uh, a reasonable place now to where I can at least test things out and see how I'm going to like working with Linux for video editing. I've done a little bit of it on my main PC, and so far it seems pretty good, but I'd like to try it back out on the Z600 and really try to breathe some new life back into this system, because I just, I love the old Z600. It's a machine that I have had for probably seven years now um, and I really have a, a connection to this machine. Um, I've had quite a few, well, I've, I've done multiple paint jobs on it in the past. I bought it when I was in college and it was my daily driver workstation for a couple of years um, through a whole graphic design uh, course and then into um, out of college, I used it for a bit. It was everything from a Minecraft server to a workstation to a video rendering box to really all sorts of things. This this machine has pulled a lot of different roles over the years. I have 
upgraded the heck out of it. It's got um, basically the most powerful CPUs that you can put in the thing. RAM configuration isn't quite maxed out. I, could, I think I can go up to 96 gigs actually in this, um, but I see very little purpose in doing so, especially if I'm running Linux. Um, I still think it's a really capable machine. So, I mean, you have two six core 12 thread processors in there. So yeah, it's still got plenty, plenty of raw CPU power. It's not going to have the best single core performance in the world. We're dealing with, you know, socket 1366 chips. So obviously pretty dated architectures, but still for, for how old this is, I think it's a 2010 system, you know, for being over 10 years old, 11 years old. Um, yeah, it still holds up really well. So I'm gonna give a few uh, give a few things a try here on this. Install some software, get things set up how I like it, and then I'm gonna to try to actually edit this video on it. So if you see this video, that means it went reasonably well. So <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was at least semi entertaining. Um, again, just a bit of fun. This machine and my Windows machine are going to trade places up here on my desk. I'm not always going to have the Z600 out, but um, at least with this configuration of monitors, I should have a lot less issues with those MST hubs in the future because I won't be using them. So a uh, word of advice to anyone who's thinking about using those things, they're flaky. They have a hard time with certain operating systems. Windows hates them as far as I can, yeah. As far as my experience goes with them, they have not been great. Um, and I've heard a lot of other people having similar issues. Running six displays off of a single PC over two display ports is really quite a tall order. Um, while it can work, it's not, yeah, it's not reliable. If you lose power and the hubs reset, oh God, it took me, shoot couple times it took me over an hour to get them to all come back up correctly. And I just, I'm sure I could have gotten them all working with Linux. I just couldn't be bothered. I'm just done. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I am so done with those things. Yeah. So plug them in direct. Everything just works perfectly. So anyway, if you need to add more of those, uh, more displays than what you can do just with one video card, the best thing, honestly, is to get just kind of a burner card and stick in another PCI Express slot if you have it. That way you have more display outputs. I can actually do that with this machine. If I wanted to get another uh, three display outputs, I could put in another card and do that. Um, and who knows, maybe in the future I will. I'm gonna keep the uh, monitor stand up here. I'll probably just take the two side, the two top side arms off of it. That way I have the vertical post that I can mount my microphone to which if you come up there, I have it just sitting on one of the, uh, the little mounts. That seems to be a nice little spot for my little blue snowflake microphone that I use on this PC. Um, the other monitor arms, I'm just going to unbolt from the hinge and pop them out for now. Um, if later on I decide to put them back on, it's just a single bolt and they'll just drop right back in there. So easy enough. In the meantime, I'm going to use these uh, other HP displays just for various testing and stuff so they'll be used outside of this context um, i've already got one mounted up to my laptop dock since i stole its display i actually like having the smaller display on that better that 27 inch panel was really unwieldy and kind of well when you're sitting that close to it and it's high up it was almost painful to look at so it kind of makes you sick with your neck tilted at that weird angle for an extended period of time. So yeah, I think this is going to work out pretty good. Let me know what you think of it in the comments, guys, and I will see you in the next video.